Alright guys, well I'm getting ready to get started on this next video. My name's Chuck, Chuck Newt, and I want to thank you for watching. Um, you know, this is uh, getting, hopefully getting down towards the end of this video, or not this video series, but yeah, well the video series, but uh, the smoker build. And, uh, you know, but I've still got quite a lot, I mean, let's say maybe a couple videos worth left. So I'm going to get turned around. Got to show you what's going on. First thing I got going on here, I kind of got my girls out uh, doing a little roaming today. I've got um, I've got six chickens right now. Uh, four of the barred rocks, which is the black and white striped ones there. And then I've got three more, or I'm sorry, two of the um, ISA browns. And uh, primarily they're for lay egg laying purposes. At one time I did have a uh, 11 chickens but uh, two of them died for some reason after about a year uh, six eight months old and then um, two of them found their way into a uh, freezer so but these girls are about oh two and a half years old now and they're still laying pretty good and uh, as you can see they're uh, pretty healthy but I've got them out there's their pan and their coop back up in here and uh, their normal roaming range. Uh, every now and then I let them out for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Let them come out here and roam around and peck and scratch in the grass. And if I uh, let them do it every day, this actually would be uh, turned into nothing but dirt. They are that ravenous, trust me, they eat a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, they eat anything they can find. If it uh, doesn't try to eat them, they will try to eat it. So, there you go. There's my other brown one over there. And then I got one that's kind of being broody over the, in the coop over there, sitting on some eggs, uh, even though they're never going to fertilize, they're never going to hatch because they haven't been fertilized. Um, and uh, so, that doesn't stop them from trying to act like a mom. They still will lay on their eggs. They don't, they don't have any clue what's going on. So that's my chickens. Like I said, I got uh, four of the barred rocks and two of the ISA browns. So there we go. I'll get back onto my smoker here. I know you can hear these, these girls in the background occasionally. And this is where all that noise comes from. All right, well, you can see on my frame here that I've got quite a lot of rust going on. Um, we have really I mean, really had the rain going on. Um, and it has both slowed me down and my ability to work on this. And uh, as you can see, it has uh, done a little, um, it has done a little rusting on this uh, steel. And uh, you look over here at my flowers, my daughter and my flowers, these are, uh, uh, yeah, these are uh, oh, purple cone flowers, what they're called. Or they're also echinacea, the same kind of echinacea that people take as a supplement uh, to fight, help fight colds and whatnot. So, uh, but as you can see, <laughs> they're laying down on the ground and the, they weren't doing that until this past week uh, when these storms came through and knocked them all down. And uh, so actually they were yeah, standing up like these over these here and, and uh, this. They were all standing up. So, um, but those storms came through and knocked them down. And uh, well, it's been a tradition for for me to plant flowers for my daughter. Now these are actually perennials and they'll come back every year. I also planted just this spring. Those, those uh, cone flowers I planted last, uh, last uh, summer, but they didn't bloom last year. Now this year I just planted these Black Eyed Susans and then there's another, there's actually another one. Let's see where it's hiding back there. It's back up under. It wasn't covered up before the storm came through. And then there's another one right here that doesn't have any blooms on it. So, um, who knows if it'll bloom or not this year. A lot of times when you plant perennials, they won't bloom the first year. Um, We'll have to see what they do. Oh, and I got a big, uh, I got a big uh, sage plant right here. I used to have it in a pot, but uh, 
it really outgrew the pot and uh, was just not doing very healthy. But since I've since it's had about, oh, I'm gonna guess um, three weeks to a month over here, it seems to be doing just fine. And it's perennial as well, and it'll come back year after year. But that is your typical, uh, that is a uh, typical sage like you would uh, cook with, which I, I like, I love sage. So there we go. I'm gonna get turned around. I got a product I, uh, I wanna show you in regards to this rust. So, uh, products that I've found. Okay, so Rust Oleum makes this uh, stuff right here called Rust Reformer. And it says it instantly converts rust to a protected paintable surface. And uh, so we're going to give this stuff a try. And the directions back here, what do they say? They say instantly bonds with rust and transforms it to a non-rusting flat black paintable surface that prevents future rust it saves you the effort of sanding sanding rust all the way down to bare metal so we're going to give this stuff a shot i've never really used it before i have known of such a product i knew that it was out there and I was at Harbor Freight the other day and uh, found this stuff. And I said, what the heck? Why not? Let's give it a try. And we'll just see where it goes. Um, let's see. Maybe I can get it up here. My camera will focus on it. Actually, it's my phone. This one, this one is my phone. Come on, phone. There you go. Now if you just pause it, you can read it. Alright, so we're just going to test this on a little spot here. Like right here. And uh, you got to shake this up. Like spray paint. It does have a ball, a rattle. It is a rattle can, they call them. And we're going to, we're just going to spray a little bit of this on here. And you see what, and it kind of, actually looks like spray paint on there this is just a little test <clears throat> right here to uh, see how it works so I'll just kind of keep you updated on that I just wanted to give a little shot on there and uh, give it a little test and I will uh, give you my opinion here Okay, so this space right here is uh, 55 and it's like 13 sixteenths or uh, yeah, 13 sixteenths. Well, there you go. Use the magnets there to get them held in place so I can get them welded. Okay, very important welding, hooking up this ground. You wouldn't believe how many times I've forgotten to do it. And the, it doesn't work at all without doing it.
Okay, so you may wonder why I go around with the uh, grinder. It's, the, it's got a wire brush on there every time after I get done welding. That's because this is flux core wire in here, which is the wire feed equivalent of uh, stick welding. And it puts off a uh, coating on the weld that you can't weld right back through again. And so I have to knock it off there. It can be knocked off with a hammer or a uh, welding hammer or whatever, chipping hammer, and uh, done that way. But I failed with the wire brush. This cleans off perfectly. And I, can go, I can go from there. Okay, so now I've got three of the four sides around this. There we go. Got a good weld all the way around it. Now, I'll grab it. I don't have to weld all the way around that. One hit on one side would have done it, but... I guess I'm one of those people that likes to go overboard with things a little bit. Yeah, and you see me break off the end of this wire every time before I start a new weld. And the reason being is because it forms a little ball on the end of there. And it will not, there's times it won't make good contact. And so by breaking off the fresh wire, it helps to alleviate, alleviate that kind of problem. inside the tip here. So now I gotta get me a pair of pliers. See if I can pull it out of there. Sometimes you can't and you get it ruins that tip. So let me get a pair of pliers. We'll be right back. So the hope is I'm just take this pair of pliers. Sometimes I can turn the tip or turn the wire in there and get it to break loose. And right now it's not breaking loose. So you may have to put a new tip on here. It's not a terribly big thing if I do, I've got more over there. I don't know if you can see this. I was all discolored there at the end. And it actually broke right there at the end of the tip uh, as I was trying to get that out of there. And I don't really have much I don't really have much there to grab onto to try to pull it back out but we'll see. I'm not too big a cheapskate but tips are free. And every one you lose up, the one less in the package. But I think that one had it. Unless I can. Sometimes I can take the wire. Use it like a little ring. Push back like that. There I was. I was able to push it back out of there. Maybe you can see that. There it goes. Now I try not to throw these pieces of wire into my driveway because they can become like little needles, and I don't want little needles in my uh, driveway to be driving on. So we got that. There we go. It works again. Now I'm. So you got about a half inch sticking out of there. That's what you want when you go to start welding. And now, because I had to abort that weld, because of the stick, I gotta grind it back off again before I get started. Done. 
That's just a story. So on to the next one. The welding helmet helps a lot. Trust me, if you forget to put your visor down or, or the face shield down, as soon as that thing sparks, you realize. One thing very critical in order to hit that a second time, you have to make sure that you're using a multi pass plus core wire in your weld. Or if it does not work, you can only hit it one time. And if you get it good, you get it good. If not, you can't go back over it again. And for that reason, in this whole entire project, I've only ever used multi pass wire. So that if I screw up, because I am an amateur welder, uh, and uh, I don't always do a perfect job. I'll go back and hit it again. Okay, so I got one more of these uh, cross pieces to do right down there where I was just uh, grinding away. In order to do it, I'm going to go ahead and flip this whole thing over and go out on the other side. I could do it down there, but it'll really be like laying on the ground when it's the middle of July and I'm sticky and sweaty. Okay, so there we go. We're all turned over now. We're all turned over now. I need to get these tips, these ends cleaned up while I'm right here. Or you want something else here. I'm sitting here looking at them, and it's
gay, so why did I have a problem with that? Because there was a gap there that the barge was down at the other end, and my wire feed speed. I wasn't feeding out enough wire to fill the gap very well. So that's the reason why I'm doing all that snapping and popping. done. Except for this last little clean off. That's some tedious stuff right there, let me tell you. Okay guys, well I ran out of battery the other night and I'm sorry about that. Um, so if you look over here over my right shoulder, you can see I got something going on. I've been hard at work, um, but you'll see a lot of that in the next video. So there's more to come. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned.